This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. Here's your daily fun fact from Artie. Did you know that in the Japanese version of the Ace Attorney series, Von Karma's name is instead Von Karuma? No, I wouldn't. Now you no. do. That makes a lot of sense, though. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Turnabout Airlines, part one of the Of end. the ending. Just, Just part, part one. one. <laughs> Just wait till we get the last case. The last case is going to be like, like, ending part, like, one side A, act three. Yeah. <laughs> Was this a Shakespeare play? <laughs> yes. Logic. Let's think. Well, broken glasses and there were glass shards. Probably that. I think we can safely conclude that these fragments are from a pair of glasses. And the victim was wearing a pair of broken glasses! Exactly what I was thinking. I'm sure that the shards would match up perfectly with the remnants of the glasses lenses. Ergo, the victim was here, just as I suspected. So you're saying... that the real scene of the crime was here, sir? Isn't that what I've been saying for a while now? Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Perhaps it's a bit early to draw that conclusion. However, I believe that the probability has just skyrocketed considerably. All that's left to do is find the murder weapon. Cool. Why, why did Mr. Stewart have the hots for Franziska? <laughs> that <laughs> well, is not what Well, she's an Interpol agent, so that's probably why. Now, why would Mr. Hicks have documents profiling Franziska? Oh, I know! I bet he's a big fan of Miss Von Karma, sir. Big fan of your, your mom. mom. We say that every time. <laughs> he literally looks exactly yeah, like Mr. Does. Stewart, though. <laughs> Franziska said that she had come to this airport as part of an Interpol investigation. Oh, maybe Mr. Hicks had heard she was coming here and he followed her. Detective, I think it's more likely that Mr. Hicks was in actuality Interpol Agent Hicks. I think Franziska has some explaining to do. truth about Mr. Stewart. You came to this airport to rendezvous with the victim, didn't you? Nonsense! What are you talking about? We found a profile detailing information about you in the victim's luggage. I suppose it was prepared for him so he could recognize you when he landed. Which makes him not Mr. Hicks, but rather Interpol Agent Hicks. Isn't that right? I should have known you'd figured it out, Miles. But it looks like they've got to him first. So you really did come here to receive an Interpol agent, then? Yes. Agent Hicks was on the trail of a very large international smuggling ring. Hmm. A smuggling ring? What is that? They smuggle stuff. Oh, but why a ring? Is it like- It's, it's like- It's just like the used to describe like the group behind it. Oh, okay. Okay. Like a game, basically. Like a ring circus. No, that's not. Like, the ring of people involved. The ring of people. Okay, 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 okay now I get it. He went undercover to investigate the crime. And it was I who put him on this case. I was supposed to receive a call from him on his cell phone once he'd landed. I never expected to receive a call about his murder instead. Hmm. I think we now have pretty definitive evidence that Agent Hicks came down here to the cargo hold. But what was he doing down here, sir? There's nothing but luggage! Oh, I get it! Maybe he forgot something in his suitcase and came down to get it. No! Agent Hicks came here for a work-related reason. Of that, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure he was here to investigate the smuggling operation he was observing. Franziska, do you know exactly how he intended to pursue his investigation? No. Unfortunately, I was going to find out from him after he landed. I see. But this raises another question. A normal passenger can't access the cargo hold on their own. Agent Hicks must have identified himself to a member of the crew, and entered the cargo hold with that person who let him in. Yes, and then he was murdered here. These glass fragments and his broken glasses are a testament to that, and then... The killer put Agent Hicks into one of the spare suitcases, and... They entered the elevator, but while they were riding it up, the plane hit that patch of turbulence. Because of the intense shaking, the suitcase popped open and Agent Hicks's body flew out. At the same time, his wallet fell out of his pocket, spilling its contents everywhere. Which explains why there was money scattered all over the elevator floor. 
Investigation complete. That was the quickest investigation. There's not a whole lot in the cargo hold, which is ironic. I think it's pretty easy to say who the culprit is at this stage. What? Really, sir? I know what you're thinking, Miles Edgeworth. But the killer can be none other than Miss Rhoda Tenero. More cross-examination. Definitive, Definitive evidence. evidence. Argument. I like that. One. That's <laughs> Ready a great to start thing. an argument? Yes. If it was a crew member, any one of them could have shown Agent Hicks to the cargo hold. But the point to keep in mind is the key card that allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high-level access is Miss Rhoda Tenero. I'd say that's a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? I mean. That's true, I do agree with Francis. However, on all if that. her thing is stolen, then literally any person could have taken her um him down there. Right, but can we we can we prove it was stolen essentially? Uh-huh. But here's the thing. If it was stolen and they're like, Oh, she's just lying, it she has it, well they can do something called a body search. Yeah. And be like, Oh hey, there's no key card. Maybe she's telling the truth. Maybe she dropped it in the toilet in the airport. <laughs> I don't know, like Shrek, you're never gonna believe what we found you. <laughs> I know what she's trying to say, but I'm not certain it's as simple as that. <laughs> you knew she was talking about Shrek in the toilet? No! <laughs> well, not Shrek in the toilet. <laughs> That's if he was a, a very crew member, different... any one of them could have shown Agent Hicks. <laughs> That's like the worst fanfiction about Shrek ever. Yeah. That might be true, <laughs> that it's the worst Shrek fanfiction ever. But then, it could be anyone, including Miss Meal, or even the captain. Don't be a fool! A plane without a pilot in the cockpit is like... A horse without a rider, crop in hand! Much like Scruffy over there. Hey! I can't disagree with her on that. Detective Gumshoe does always need a guiding hand. However, autopilot. Very well, then what about the other flight attendant, Miss Meal? Autopilot for that turbulence? Huh, I thought you might ask about her. But the point to keep in mind is the key card. Hold it! But it's highly likely that the keycard was stolen from Miss Tenero. Objection! It's highly likely? Is that a possibility the best you can come up with? And you call yourself a disciple of my father. Nah. Yes, well, while I don't have any evidence, I... Be quiet! You're a disgrace! There's more evidence pointing to Miss Rhoda Tenero, you know. It's not just the keycard that gives her away! Are you talking about the murder weapon, the Mr. I Fly piggy bank? Yes! She is also the only person with a key to open that display case! No, pretty sure that Miss Meal. Meal. yeah, could open it. Maybe. Further, there's the matter of the key to the display case that held the murderous bank. But that is a fake. Stop right there, Miles Edgeworth. You don't have any proof that this is just a red herring. If you must keep on insisting that it's a fake, then what is the real murder weapon and where did it go? Speechless, I see. That's not a surprise. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed! There must be a way. There must be something that can help me rule out the piggy bank as the murder weapon. What should be examined further to help us ascertain the authenticity of the weapon? Are we looking for, like, fingerprints? The crime scene we already searched, there was nothing. The piggy bank... Maybe it's in the piggy bank? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I actually don't remember which one it is. But it's, it's not the crime scene. I think we should examine the crime scene in more detail. We might turn up the murder weapon if we search all of the cargo and luggage. Did you think I hadn't thought of that? Even now we're searching through them. But we haven't found anything that even closely resembles a murder weapon. All right, then. I suppose we should examine something else. The body? Is that the one? Oh, that is the one. Okay. We should examine the bank itself once more to determine if it is the real murder weapon. If this is the real weapon, it should be damaged or perhaps has a dent in it somewhere. We've looked into that already and there's no sign of anything on it. But we can't discount it as the murder weapon on that, uh, of that one fact alone. The piggy bank is, after all, made of stronger material than human flesh. If I can't prove it through the piggy bank itself, then I must find another way. 
Franziska, I think you were too quick to jump to your conclusions. Oh, was I? Yes, we don't even have the autopsy results yet. How can I not say that? How can I not say that you've made a snap judgment when you have yet to even see if the wound on Agent Hicks's head is consistent with the murder weapon? Scruffy! Yes, sir! Contact the medical examiner's office at once! I wish to hear the results of Agent Hicks' autopsy! Yeek! Yes, sir! <laughs> And they wait to decide. We've got a big problem, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! The body's gone? What is it, detective? They're still doing the autopsy, but they said that they already know one thing for sure. Report! Now! The doc said that it's one giant bruise from a beating from his shoulder down to his mid-back. From the victim's shoulder to his mid-back? He was beaten over such a wide area? Well, I'd say maybe it's a sign the killer had a grudge against Agent Hicks. If it wasn't just his head, I mean, the killer went all out and hit him multiple times, sir. Autopsy report data jotted down. Scruffy, what if he, what is had a giant, what am I saying? What is had a grudge against Agent Hicks supposed to mean? I, well, that's, um, was the wound on the victim's head consistent with the murder weapon detective? Oh, well, they said they were still looking into that, sir. You're completely useless! Yo! <laughs> Poor Gumshoe. Uh, sir, I told you already, you can't go down there! This is just our <laughs> new... This is our new police officer voice. <laughs> uh, I'm really nervous! <laughs> no, you remove yourself from my way! What is all that racket? My luggage! My cargo! They're mine and I demand you return them to me! We're still investigating the cargo hold! Please understand and have a little patience! They're one of the fruits of the spirit, you know! <laughs> <laughs> I suppose there is no choice. Finally! I think he can- Hey, what are you- You have left me no choice but to use force! Ah! You, you won't get past me! This is- Wait, that's it! So that's what this whole thing has been about! Further, there is the matter of the key to the display case that held the murderous bank. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. The doc said that it's one giant bruise from a beating from his shoulder down to his mid-back. What the heck? Is this another pushed into something? Alright, so we got four things. Well, if there's a bruise, and the weapon can't be found, probably that has to do with the cause of death. No, uh, no, no! Start with that one, please. Thank you. Logic. Nope. Oh, come on. And then he beats himself up. <laughs> he slaps himself. <laughs> I, I, I can do better. <laughs> I can do better. Allegedly, the killer struck the victim many times over, which is why there is extensive bruising over such a wide area. But is that really the correct conclusion to draw from the evidence? The bruise from his shoulder to the middle of his back is one continuous mark, which is more suggestive of a single blow to the back. If that's the case, then the piggy bank is much too small to have caused that. Therefore, the murder weapon must be something far bigger. <laughs> logic! Logic! I've never heard of that before! <laughs> if we're looking for a rather large weapon, you'd think it would stick out. But so far, we haven't found anything that resembles a weapon of any sort. Perhaps... Just perhaps it's because we all overlooked it from the very beginning. Because normally it's too impossibly big to be taken into consideration. W what was that all about? Was he trying to jump his way down here? Franziska. What? What do you want? I found it, Franziska. I found the real murder weapon. You did? He... He really jumped! We didn't realize it until now, but... The answer has been right in front of us this whole time. He might be hurt! We should go check up on him, sirs! There's that pump 
Pompous? Pompous. Pompous. Okay, I never say pompous. There's that pompous attitude of yours again. You should learn to drop that habit. This is coming from a prosecutor with a habit of whipping everyone she comes across. What if that was the killer and he just killed himself on the thing? <laughs> I don't you think know. LeBlanc was the killer? Well, I think he might have been the person that Mr. Hicks was looking into that's like smuggling oh, art. Oh, smuggling art. Yeah. <laughs> I stole this from the Louvre. Yeah. I will sell it to the America for big bucks. In, in reality, he's, he's just like, um, uh, what is it, Sue Allen in, in her, the dream sequence from Arthur? <laughs> <laughs> in reality, that's what she is. <laughs> I've got to put that clip in there. Yeah, put that in. <laughs> Future Artie, please put that, at least part of that clip in. <laughs> anyway, if you really are a prosecutor, then you'll back yourself up with evidence! You two aren't listening at all, are you? Come on, then. Show me this real murder weapon you speak of. <laughs> I don't have evidence. <laughs> that would be stupid to say. What? This is the real murder weapon. We don't have it in our inventory, though. It's like, thus, the luggage. <laughs> he fell on my prosecutor's back. I have concluded Super sharp. that this is the real weapon, I suppose. What is that supposed to mean, you fool? That was practice just now for when I would show you the real murder weapon. Why don't we add practice whippings to your routine as well? No! I need to think about the circumstances of the victim's death in a different way. There's a wide bruise running from the victim's shoulder down to his mid-back. Maybe I should be focusing on what could cause such a large bruise in one strike. Come on now. Humph. I don't have any evidence to show you. Foolishly reasoning for a foolish fool with a foolishly foolish fool meant to fool me. What do you mean by I don't have any evidence to show? Perhaps I should have phrased it as that which caused Agent Death's Agent Hicks's death is incorporeal. Agent Death's Hick. Agent Death's Hick. <laughs> Agent Death's Hickey. <laughs> Ugh. That's a very different That's name. a different <laughs> Forgive me, but I do believe I have figured out what is the real cause of death. Um well, it's probably free fall. Free fall. Why would it be suffocation? The victim suffered from a lack of oxygen in the elevator and suffocated. Ooh, that's dark. Go back to DL6. No offense, but that's uh, not. And the bruising on his back and his broken neck was caused by his uh, sudden fall to the ground. You are like a fly buzzing in my ear. Be gone! Ah! Ah, oh, that wasn't such a bad guess, Mr. Edgeworth. Without a shred of proof, did he just accuse me of making a good guess? <laughs> Wait. But he did imply I was on the right track. Forgive me, but I do believe I have figured out what was the real cause of death. Strangling! The victim was strangled to death inside the elevator. But there are no marks on his neck because... The killer found a way to hide somehow. And the bruising on his back and his broken neck was caused by his sudden fall to the ground. Care to explain how the killer magically erased strangulation marks from around his neck? Strangulation marks? <laughs> That's the word I was trying to use, yes. In that case, please allow me to demonstrate. That's going to leave a mark on my penalty meter. <laughs> Aw, oh, that wasn't such a bad guess, Mr. Edward. Yes, it was. It was a terrible guess. The victim fell from a great height and subsequently died as a result. In other words, the real cause of death is free falling to the ground. He f f fell to his death? Yes, this is the only plausible possibility. The victim has extensive bruising on the back of his head and his back. And the only rational explanation for these injuries is that he fell to his death. But the murder happened inside this plane! I know. Are you claiming that there is some place in this plane from which he could have fallen from? As I said earlier, the answer has been right in front oh of my us gosh. the entire time. When there was the turbulence, did the elevator break and then the elevator free fell? Um, no. No. The elevator's working! I uh, not like break, but like stop. Because the no. It turns into the Tower of Terror? Yeah. Ah! You. You can't mean! Yes, I do. The victim fell from the top of yeah, the stairs yeah. of this very cargo hold. 
What? Then, then, well, we're in trouble. We may have a second death on our hands, sirs. Hey, you, tell me you aren't dead, pal. Quiet, why are you screaming? He's alive. And there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. It's not possible that Agent Hicks fell over the railing to his death. That man is living proof of that. I suppose it's true that it's not possible, given the current circumstances. The current circumstances? What is that supposed to mean? Suppose that large piece of cargo wasn't there at the time. What would have happened then? He would have been a Borginian pancake for sure, pal! I suppose that man over there wouldn't still be breathing. But the reality is that the cargo box is there! So there's no point in entertaining your wild hip <laughs> hypothetical scenario. I, can't. Uh, I don't know why I couldn't say hypothetical at first. Yeah, that's a little strange. It may be there now, but there's no proof that it was always there. Ha! As if there could have been a window of time when that giant box was not there. Ah, but there was. What? What can I use to show her that it's possible the box was not always where it is now? Turbulence! Turbulence, turbulence. Oh, uh, we don't have evidence of turbulence. Oh, uh, the... the, the, the. Go, 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 Josie! <laughs> Missy. The box is not always Actually, wait, hang on. Is there a picture? Does this have a turbulence? No. Picture... The Sky Magazine would not be able to report turbulence that we're, By the way, at this time, we're gonna have some turbulence, aka the captain's gonna be gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Sup, bros? <laughs> Did... Wait a minute. <laughs> Did he... Did Mr. Stewart buy that entire thing and then I gotta it up. have it. Like, I'm gonna give it to Chris's mom. Did he buy that and then that's the giant thing that he fell on? That's the gi- <laughs> Wait. The box? What if that's just the box? Box? <laughs> Doesn't this show sufficient probability to you? Why are you asking me? I was the one asking you. I think there's some possibility in that, sir! No one was asking for opinions from the instant noodle crowd, Scruffy. I suppose this is where the phrase, to be whipped by one's opponent, came from. Don't act as though you have nothing to do with this. Now answer the question! I suppose she's right, but first I should reconsider all of the information I have. Do, 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 do. Uh, on the... Oh, her testimony? No. Suitcase report. Maybe it was... Um... Oh. Yeah, transfer cargo. You refueled in the Republic of Zangfa? Yes, this flight had a short layover in Zangfa in order to refuel. But that wasn't the only reason for the layover. We also transferred some cargo. What if the box in question was only transferred onto the plane at that time? To further prove my point, let's take a look at what's next to the box in question. Ah! It's labeled Zane Fa Express! Correct. Meaning it was loaded onto the plane in Zane Fa. Now, what if the box in question was also loaded on at the same time? It would mean that the box was not here in the cargo hold during the Europe to the Zane Fa leg of the flight. Making a clear drop from which a Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death is clearly entirely possible. Ah, uh, but your theory is still very far-fetched. Then allow me a chance to prove how very likely my scenario is. My first order of business will be to examine that piece of cargo in more detail. Bump, 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 bump. Walk. Walk. <laughs> hey, hey, Francisco. <laughs> I'm awesome, you're not. I'm, I'm awesome. awesome, you're not. <laughs> we need a ball, though, to do that. Back, back, back. No. Back, back, back. <laughs> I, I hope people enjoy this series. <laughs> With me messing up words so much and you making him do the chicken dance. The chicken dance is freaking amazing. Hmm, this is a rather large piece of cargo. There's a tag on it, sir. Let's see. Aleph Red statue? Was Never I heard right? of it. Nor I, but all I care about it here is if we can prove it wasn't here at the time of the crime. 
Then let's invest get investigating, sir. Zani, I just Sir. I told him you suck. <laughs> Look here. Do not go about touching my possessions without my permission. Yeah. Don't rush up on me like that, pal. So this belongs to Mr. LeBlanc, does it? I should see what else I can find out from him. I want to talk to him. <laughs> He's got the finger guns going on. I take it that this large piece of cargo belongs to you, Mr. LeBlanc. Of course it is mine! I shipped this fine piece of art from Europe! The Aleph Red statue is worth 10 million cents! No, maybe much, much more. Hmm. Mr. LeBlanc's reason for choosing this plane must have been the large cargo hold. How is he gonna carry that out of the airport? <laughs> Imagine that going around the walking track. Ah, <laughs> Gordon puts it in his, it's like his I backpack. I don't know. How do people transfer... You better have an Uber that can hold this. <laughs> I think when people transport things that large, they use a boat after it flies. Like, probably after oh, I'm not used to off being... of the airplane, it's then taken to a boat. Like, it's transported in, like, a U-Haul or something. <laughs> Here's a U-Haul waiting for him. <laughs> for every hour we don't put the luggage on there, the U-Haul charges me more. That's why he wants one. <laughs> Ten million cents? I suggest you stop trying to calculate how many packets of noodles that makes, Detective. Darn! How did you know? How did you do that? I feel like you keep getting better and better at seeing right through me every year. Though I grow with each revolution of the planet around the sun, I have the distinct impression he continues to madly spin in place. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, so that 10 million cents, is that in euros or, or in dollars? Does it really make a difference to our case? Mr. LeBlanc, there is a chance that your cargo is related to our murder case. I was wondering if you would allow us to examine it a bit closer. It is a very valuable piece of art, so no, there will be no touching. Has he checked it since it was loaded on the plane? Maybe there's blood. Blood on it. Oh, that's that's possible. Uh, smuggling a valuable piece of art. Baby, those wow. are connected. Wow. It's a clue. We got a letter from our friend. <laughs> Mr. LeBlanc is not the one who wrote that letter, though. <laughs> nope. If Mr. LeBlanc has something to do with the smuggling ring, then it's possible this fake statue was brought on board in Zane Fa. Okay. Can you understand now why Zinc LeBlanc, his first name is Zinc, yes. Mr. LeBlanc is one of the most least liked characters. Because he's just a he's, he's just so and... annoying. Yeah. I didn't know he was the least liked character. He's not. One of them. Least liked characters are him, Mo the Clown. What? I know, people hate Mo, and it's terrible. Mo's not bad. Acro's worse than Mo. Oh, and people are like, Acro's the only good character in that case. Like, no, what Acro are you talking about? Okay. Like, oh, I like oh, to yeah. sit and Okay, so birds. three most three least liked characters are that I know of are Zinc LeBlanc, Mo the Clown, and Direct Jihadi. Well but that makes sense because he's literally a pervert. Yeah. I'm surprised that um Panties Man isn't on there too. Wesley Stickler. I am the true gentleman of the office. <laughs> <laughs> About your statue, Mr. LeBlanc. I wonder if it might be a fake. Well, what? How dare you say my art is fake? I suspect that your statue might be the target of an international smuggling ring. Don't say such fantastical things! Those thieves will not dare! I have certification of my cargo right here! Do you mean the cargo certification document? Mr. Zinc LeBlanc, why didn't you say so earlier? Please show us to this at once. I can't read this. What does this say? It says as plain as day, the cargo was put onto the plane in Europe. And there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. Too bad for you. This statue was brought on board in Europe, just as the states, just as it states in the certificate. No, that's... Which means that there was never a window of time in which the statue wasn't sitting there. What if the turbulence was so bad that it... It made the statue fly. Makes no sense. When I see a statue fly. I respectfully disagree. We can't discount the theory until I see the statue for myself. Hmph! <laughs> then you can have it your wish. Look at it yourself and see I am right. Maybe it's hollow. This. I know I've seen this somewhere before. This is the Owl of Red? It gives us a, such a feeling of art! I can practically smell it! This statue has a high amount of historic value. After it was unveiled at the museum in Europe, I brought it to this country to exhibit it. So, 
he has So he them. didn't make it. He bought it and was he, like, I'm going to make a fortune. He bought it, supposedly, but we have pictures of the other... I'm Look, look at our organizer. Because I need to check something. This one? Yep. The eyes are red instead of yellow. Very That's sharp. That's a fake. Or the other one's a fake. And they set it up in the midst of the thing. Yeah, this is totally different. So this is the infamous Aleph Red statue. Mm -hmm. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you find something? There's something wrong with this picture. We should examine it in more detail. Yeah, I already You're, got it. Yeah, you did. did. So this is the Aleph Red statue. I swear I've seen this somewhere before. Why would it be red? There's no red on it. No wonder this thing is worth 10 million cents. Look at how it sparkles, sir. I wouldn't call it sparkling, detective. Maybe more along the lines of dully shining. By the way, for people who can't math and don't know, 10 million cents is $100,000. Oh. I mean, that's, that's a lot. Are these fa eyes made of some sort of gem? That's a real nice shade of orange. For a sec, I couldn't even tell they were jewels. Oh, but they kind of remind me of the eyes of this stray cat that lives near my house. Yeah. Are the eyes supposed to be this color? Is it possible this statue is a fake? Deduce. Deduce. We can't. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Or actually, no. We'll get there now. Because we can examine the bottom later. Yeah, you, you found that right away. I, yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be red. These eyes are awfully orange, don't you think? Yeah, and pretty. They remind me of sunsets when I was in grade school, sir. I don't think you see what I'm talking about. No, I do. But it's really like the color of the sun when it's setting, sir, in my grade school. <laughs> ah, the memories. I remember standing out in that field spinning with my arms out until I felt ill. I don't care about sunsets! Focus, <laughs> detective! What color are the eyes in this photo? Huh? <laughs> Ah! Sir, they're red! As I thought, this statue is a fake. Mr. LeBlanc? What do you want? Do you not know I am a busy man? I will allow you two seconds for your answer. The Aleph Red, I suppose this is your pride and joy, is it not? It is the biggest trophy on this European trip. Do you know why I wanted to possess this statue? The trigger started 17 years ago. Better grab it, share, sir. Sounds like this could be a long story. Mr. LeBlanc, I regret to inform you, and you have my heartfelt sympathy, but... What is that? Sympathy? For what? You'll see. I'd like you to compare the eyes. That large fellow there has very bright and pretty eyes compared to you. I wasn't talking about the two of us. I meant the eyes of the statue in front of us and the one in this photo. Why the sudden yelling? Now then, oh! It is a photo of the statue on display at the museum in Europe. Now do you see, Mr. LeBlanc? The statue before us is a fake. The, the fake! I believe that even further examination will be required, now that we have confirmed that this is indeed a fake. There must be some sort of proof that this was brought on board during Zane Fa. And I will present to you evidence that will resolve the remaining contradiction. So this Aleph Red is a fake. That art dealer isn't looking too happy about it either, oh, sir. Oh, I know it. What? Um, the statue, the tart from the other one is underneath it. It's true. Which would suggest that you would have the previous statue in there first before this one was put in, because why would you move it? Which mm. means that both of these came on at the same time. Good thinking, Toad. Thanks. <laughs> I will get to the bottom of this for his sake as well as mine. That's exactly it, I think. The leftover suitcases sit here, lined up in two pretty neat rows. Too bad for Miss Tenero, but this design is unmarketable. Oh! Why don't they sell them in the airport and have a bargain basement sale? Buy one, get one free! If you win the raffle, you get one more for free! How about those ideas, sir? I think if they did that, everyone would lose. <laughs> wow. wow! Savage! <laughs> what have we here? It says Zane Fox Express on the- Oh, <laughs> it says Zane Fox Express on the cloth, sir. I was trying to imitate your voice earlier. <laughs> Don't mind that. Something is tugging on the corner of my mind. As though something is out of place? Yes. I got it. You got it. Yeah! Is sometimes this spot I'm smart. somehow connected? Sometimes I'm smart and sometimes I'm like, someone shot a gun to shoot off their gun to shoot off the villain. And then somebody came up in a costume and killed the other guy. <laughs> yep. There is clearly a contradiction here. What are you going on about? 
It's just a simple case of a cargo cover getting stuck from under another piece of cargo. Yeah, you sweat, Frau Karma, or cry, I don't know. I think it's sweating, though. Ah! That's not possible! But it is. It shouldn't be this way, but the statue is on top of the cloth. Supposing that the neighboring piece of cargo was brought on board in Zane Fa, there is no way that any part of it should wind up under something from Europe. Which means that this fake statue was smuggled on board in Zane Fa. That's like a latent puzzle, basically. But then what about the cargo certificate? Certificate? <laughs> she, she butchers words when she's upset. Yeah. Let me ask in return, what about Agent Hicks? Why did he come down here in the middle of the flight? There's only one reason why. To secure proof of smuggling activity aboard this flight. So you say, but I don't believe he had to do that mid-flight. We could have just as easily inspected all of the cargo after the plane landed. That may be true, however, you have it backwards, Francisco. Sure, Agent Hicks could have waited until after the plane had landed, but he had a reason for coming down to the cargo hold. Suppose he had found the fake at the airport. It would have been after the swap had occurred. At that time, the suspicion would naturally fall upon the statue's owner. Who would have no way to prove that the statue is switched without his knowledge? Which means there is someone involved who is forging or modifying cargo certificates. Oh. I don't know. Maybe it's the guy Complete. who eats food. The guy who eats food? I guess the victim knew that the real version of this was gonna get nabbed, huh? Yes, while this photo could be seen as nothing more than a simple souvenir, it was in fact taken to be used as a reference document later on. Next, Agent Hicks had to secure proof that the smuggling had taken place. He came down here to take a picture of the cargo hold. A rather empty one at that, right before the fake statue could be loaded on board. A photo of the hold missing a valuable piece of cargo would have been proof enough. After that, all he had to do was hold the Zhang Fa cargo crew and arrest the smuggler. Exactly. This only goes to prove my theory. If the statue was not in the cargo hold during the Europe Zane Fa leg of the trip, there would have been enough height at which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death. Officer! Move this statue immediately. I want a thorough examination of the floor underneath. Now! Why do I have to do it by myself? Oh, Miss Fuckarm, I'm ready to report my find! <laughs> he has an even whinier voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, forensics, go on. I have to move the Alfred statue out of the way! Uh, we tested the area under a <laughs> luminol and there was a reaction! <laughs> I see. There was a reaction to luminol. An indication that there was blood in that spot. Uh, can we stop looking at it now, sirs? It would seem that my deductions were correct after all. I suppose it would appear that way. The culprit cleaned the blood up well. And how do you think the killer did that? How did the killer clean up all the blood? He put the statue over it. Take that! I would suppose that perhaps the culprit used this to clean up the blood. There is no need for you to waste your breath if you're just going to waste my time. After all, I hate to waste my energy on wasteful whipping. If it's not wasteful, then I'd rather that you didn't whip me at all! Oh, it's, it's the cloth. I'm an idiot. <laughs> For the killer to clean up the blood, they would have needed something to soak it up! <laughs> I'm an idiot. Take that. The killer used the bloody cloth I found inside the suitcase to clean up the mess. I see. They had a need to clean up all the blood before the plane landed in Zengfa. Yes, because otherwise the cargo crew would have discovered it during the layover. Whoa, George, you'll never believe what I found today! <laughs> <laughs> George. It's just the, it's yeah. the people unloading the plane, they're like, whoa! <laughs> so, you guys are saying that the murder happened before the plane landed in Zane Fa? There's no other conceivable timeline for the events of the murder. But if that's true, then that throws a certain person's testimony into doubt. If the murder occurred before they landed in Zane Fa, then this becomes highly suspect. Miss Tenebro's testimony, Miss Meal's testimony, um, or Mr. LeBlanc's testimony. Um, well... Okay, um, Miss Meal, she was literally just talking about. Was she talking about napping or was she talking about someone being in their seat? She was like, oh yeah, Acme Hicks was in his seat at 5 a.m. Okay, Tenero is fine. LeBlanc, I'm pretty sure, because he, his well, testimony. He's just been a butt. <laughs> his testimony was just like, oh, I wanted to watch this movie and then it didn't show <laughs> and then this guy died. So that could be suspect. Alright, well, let's do the stupid one let's first. Let's do the stupid one first. 
Miss Tanera's testimony is not particularly suspect, correct? Correct. Well, that's all well and good. Glad we agree. No, that is not all well and good, Miles Edgeworth. Nah! I suppose there's no fooling her. The point to focus on is the fact that the crime occurred before we landed in Zainfall. The times referenced by Mr. LeBlanc in his testimony are inaccurate. However, I believe the actual body of his testimony is fairly reliable. What are you sputtering on over there? Hurry up and write with your answer! H hold on! I'm still collecting my thoughts! And I'm still collecting my words! The point to focus on is the year. Really? She was the one I didn't think it would be. Recall Miss Meal's testimony about Agent Hicks in regard to when we departed Zane Fogg. I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in his seat at 5 a.m., you know? She claims Agent Hicks was alive at the time of the service calls, but... That totally contradicts the facts, sir! But why would she lie about something like that? I think the only person who can answer that is Miss Meal herself. You didn't think you were like, I don't suspect Cammy. I was, uh, no, I literally just said last episode, I was like, I bet it was her and the pilot. In cahoots. Oh. They're, they're like lovers, weirdness, and then they're like, oh, let's murder people. <laughs> I, I've always wondered, because th there are, there have been historically, like, a couple of people where it's like, oh yeah, there's like, a husband and wife who are like, a serial killer duo. Yeah. I always wonder how, like, people like that find each other. Like, I, I hate what? to say okay. I'm happy for them, but, Well, like... no, but because, like, obviously, like, when you go on a date, you're not gonna reveal yourself to be a serial killer. No. So, like, but eventually they had to reveal each other as serial killers to each other. How sure. would you do that? Like, would it just be like, <laughs> like, would it just be like, hey, honey, you wanna, like, Kill this guy today? It's a yes. That's literally the plot of Heather's. Now that I think about it, Heather's. Heather's. Well, okay, it's it's a movie from the eighties about this girl who's like kind of a nerd, and then she they're like there's the three popular girls in school who are all named Heather, and she starts dating this guy who turns out to be basically like a serial killer, but he like one day he's just like, hey, what if we like killed the popular girl? And she's like. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be funny, and then, like, that happens. She's like, She's like oh. oh, okay, and then they, like, kind of go in cahoots with it. I don't, it's a really weird show, as well as if, a movie, if because you know it's how, a musical. If you know how serial killer couples end up together, please let me know in the comments below. How, how would they know? <laughs> oh, I have a friend who's and, a and when you killer. And when you write your answer, I will be calling the police on you. No. <laughs> no, I, I won't. I'm more interested, if you work, I mean, this is... T no people probably if you work as um a person who transports luggage or gets it out i want to know what's like the weirdest thing you've seen in somebody's luggage or if you check luggage at the airport like if you do the um the x-ray scanner thing oh. and make, see if there's stuff in there <laughs> marty what's the weirdest marty thing you've if seen you in have there? reddit that should be like an ask reddit post you make <laughs> like, <laughs> airport workers of reddit what's the weirdest thing you've seen in someone's luggage <laughs> nothing but ranch <laughs> just ranch dressing <laughs> tide pods anyhow me, tune in next time everyone until we meet again have a great day and god bless nothing but croc shoes Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> it's just a bunch of communion cups of wine. That's weird. They're like, uh, that's not gonna work with your liquids. They need to be under 1.5 ounces. <laughs>